Today we're going to show you my favorite car of all time, Steve McQueen's Jaguar XKSS. Back once again with Leslie, Leslie Kendall, Chief Historian, Peterson Museum, Automotive Guru. Was that better than the last time I introduced you? <laughs> this is flattering. You're very kind. Thank you. <laughs> so today we are here with Steve McQueen's Jaguar XKSS. Iconic, iconic car. Tell us all about it. You couldn't do it today, but back in the 50s and even the, or the 40s or 30s, you could campaign a car at Le Mans and put a roadable version of it on the street and expect to get customers and uh, ex expect it to sell. Today, Le Mans cars are so specialized, there's just no way you can do that. Uh, you cannot take a Le Mans car that's, that's been dialed in for very certain purposes. It's dialed in for the Mulsanne straight. It's dialed in for the, for the this specific kind of curves that it has to, it has to go through. Uh, in the day, they used sports racing cars. They were kind of a dual purpose sports racing uh, car for, for Le Mans. And um, Jaguar were very successful at it. They kind of, they kind of hit on a, on a formula and they won Le Mans multiple times in a row. Uh, so many with this model? Not with this, not with, well, they certainly did win with this model, um, but they also, they also campaigned very well with C-Type and, and earlier, even earlier in their, in their history. Uh, but this car was certainly a Le Mans winner. Not, year, not this very year, car. What year is this car? Uh, we're calling it a 56, but it overlaps it kind of into 57. It's titled as a 56, that's why we call it that. But a lot of people uh, would, would, would say that uh, it's 57, but that's what it says on the paperwork. It, it, that's what it we're going with. It's so gorgeous to look at. It's a piece of art. It, it really is a spectacular looking car. If it's something that Jaguar always seemed to have going for it, it was the voluptuousness of the coachwork. Even, even back to the SS90 and SS100 immediately before World War II, there was just something sensuous, something sinewy about the, the, about the car, the, the flowing lines. The E-Type is not that dissimilar, right? It still has the same kind of lines to it. The E-Type is, is a, a, a E-Type is, I would say, is an evolution of this. It, ha, it has the, the, the very sensuous bulging fenders. They almost look muscular. Uh, you know, in, right. in, in, you know, using one set of eyes and and voluptuous using another set of eyes. You know, it, it just it it just depends. Either way, it's got curves in all the right places. Beautiful. And this particular car belonged to Steve McQueen. This car belonged to Steve McQueen. He actually bought it secondhand. Uh, it was uh, it left the factory white with a red interior. Wow. We know that much. And uh, it was used uh, for, for a lot of different things, but it's documented to have been used to help lay out the Riverside Raceway track. Really? When they were, get, when they were getting close to, to, to perfecting the curves and the final uh, embankments and things like that, they, they used this car to test it because what, what better car could there possibly have been? It was the, exactly the kind of car that, that you would want to experiment with on a track like that. This car has to be incredibly valuable. I, I know that there's very few of them and there's been a couple that have sold 30, 40 million dollars crazy. And that wasn't Steve McQueen, so who knows what this is worth? A lot, right? Quite a bit, quite yeah. a bit. And, and the reason it's worth so much is because what it means. Um, it, this car is, some people consider it, um, I'm sure you would consider it the apex of design. And it just didn't look good. It performed good, and it wasn't didn't just perform good. It was rare, and it was it was exquisitely built. There? there were 16 of these built. There were supposed to be 25, but there was a fire in the Jaguar factory that consumed nine of the D types. Jaguar had D type. D type was a pro production car, if you will. Jaguar made them. You could buy one, and you could campaign it. Um, when they were no longer competitive, they were essentially left with, with vehicles that they um, really, really couldn't sell for racing. So Jaguar said, well, let's not just throw them away, let's adapt them for road use. Let's give them a proper windshield. Let's give them, you know, kind of a hint of bumper, front and back. Let's give them a spare tire. Let's give them a means to carry luggage. Uh, so it's got a luggage rack on the back. Let's give it a, a top. Uh, and and you see that they, they didn't change much because the gas, gas tank is filled 
uh, from the rear package shelf. Uh, in, in other words, if the top was up, you'd have to open the door and, <laughs> and, and, put, the, and put the fuel inside and, and fill it from the inside. Now, when incredible. Steve McQueen got this car, uh, he didn't he didn't like the color combination. But you look at this car now, and it it, it very much in the British idiom. It's British racing green with a black interior, but it wasn't born that way. When it left the factory, we believe it was white with a red interior. Steve McQueen, we think justifiably, did not think that that was a very serious color combination for this kind of car. This car was brutal. White with a red interior does not scream brutal. It's the type of spec I would have ordered, white with red interior. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know, you're you're, you're in good interior. company, but we're talking about Steve McQueen. I know, I no, know. We're, we're talking about the coolest guy that some people think ever lived. He's saying I'm not cool now. <laughs> I heard that too. <laughs> red with the white would certainly go with what you have on. There we go, and, there we go. And what I can tell you is that would have been very important for a Concorde in the 50s. You would have taken the prize. The interior wasn't just anybody that did the interior. It was a fellow named Tony Nancy who was a very famous hot rodder from the Los Angeles area who custom upholstered it for uh, Steve McQueen himself. And while we're talking about custom touches, I'd like to point out that this is the only XASS that has a glove compartment door. Um, the others had just a, a hole in, in the dashboard where you literally put your gloves when you weren't driving the car. But when you think of the acceleration uh, that this car was capable of, if you put your foot into it, what's ever sitting on the, on the dashboard or what's ever in an open glove compartment is going to come right out. Right. You have to think of the G-forces that this car will generate uh, in acceleration and in the corners. And what it, is the performance of this car? Um, I have to tell you, I, I just don't know. Okay. Sorry, viewers. Well, yeah. But in its day, it was ridiculous. It, well, well, in its day, pi picture this. Um, picture yourself driving around Los Angeles um, in, in, in a car like this. Um, in, in LA, it's, it's really all about getting away from the stoplight before anybody else can. Right. And not only could this car do that, but in LA, there's a street called Mulholland. It follows along a, 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 um, a mountain range, and it has some very interesting curves to it. And there's some very nice houses there. A lot of celebrities live there. And people say, I'm going to do a Mulholland. Uh, it means they're going to take a car out, and they're going to maybe, maybe I'm not going to say flog it, but they're going to test the limits, perhaps, uh, on, that, on that stretch of I've never heard that road. expression before. Going to do, have you heard that? No, I haven't. But I like it. I yeah. know Mulholland very well. It's a scenic route. It's a beautiful road to drive on. Well, yeah, I mean, McQueen, McQueen had a house up there. McQueen had a house in those hills. And um, a lot of people wish they did too. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm going to enlist your help. I'd like you to go to the other side I'm if happy you would. to do it. Happy to do it. And unbuckle the leather buckle. All right. The leather strap. Thanks. Just Queen's like just back. like a belt. Indeed. <laughs> and Rotate the handle so it's vertical, pointing upward. Got you. And now help me lift it. Oh my god. Whoa, goodness. look at this like brand new. This is a serious engine. There was nothing on this car that it didn't absolutely have to have to get down the road, to get around the racetrack, to get around the Le Mans course as fast as possible. Look at those Weber carbs. Three Weber cars, but look how big they are. They're huge. <laughs> Massive. This, this engine needed a lot of air and it needed a lot of fuel. I don't think anybody really cared about the wow. kind of amount of fuel that was Incredible, using. That's right. not what it was this about. This is unreal. I mean, I didn't expect it to look like this. No, I didn't. But there's a sculptural quality to it. And the whole idea of, of the front lifting up is you can get, you can get into any area you need you know, quite simply. Picture yourself at Le Mans. When you're at a stop, you don't want to have people undoing uh, Zeus fasteners and taking off a hood. You want something that comes off very, very quickly. Unbelievable. And the suspension looks so modern for its age. It really does. One has to consider that a lot of modern innovations exist because of racing cars. They exist because they were found to be a better way of doing it on the track. Uh, and that's essentially not every automotive development because I don't think air conditioning uh, had much to do with that or power windows. But, but when you talk about things like suspension, braking power, um, uh, geometry and going into the corners, um, aerodynamics, those things eventually would end up on your regular production car. And it was 
it, in, in a way, it was kind of a coup for, for a manufacturer to have a car like this. Because if you were buying a Jaguar back in 56, 57, you, you would think to yourself, this is the beating heart of my car. Right. My car has this engine in it, or a version of this engine. I can pretend I'm C. McQueen for a little while, maybe. There you go. And again, you have to have a, some people have to have a more of imagination than others to pretend they're C. McQueen, but, but it's absolutely, you could. absolutely gorgeous. What is this? It looks like the gas filling it's, tank. It's a, it's a sump for the oil. Okay. It's a, it's a dry sump system um, because when you're... Like a Porsche 911. Uh, yes. Yeah. You, yes. You could say that. And uh, you, because in the corners, you don't want... Um, you want to keep consistent oil pressure. You don't have to worry about oil being in, in the bottom and worrying about throwing, throwing it up uh, into the, uh, uh, to lubricate the cylinders. You want it. You want positive um, pressure, right? And that and that's kind of what that helps to caps. provide. I know they're brilliant, aren't they? Brilliant. I mean, that's a testament to how this thing must have handled, given that they're worried about getting oil surge and oil starvation right. because of just how hard it could corner. How did the doors open? Well, the doors open. Let's let's shut the yes. hood let's and buckle it we, back we up. can just say it down. We don't have to relatch it or anything. We just set it down very gently. One got in the automobile by reaching around and grabbing a latch that's somewhat <laughs> hidden <laughs> right wow. here. Keep in mind, this is a, this is a racing car. So if the roof was up and the door was closed and you stood outside the car, how do you get to the inside of the car to open the door? The short answer is you didn't, or if you really, really had to, you could unscrew the window and take it off. Oh, that's a little inconvenient. <laughs> that's a little, that's a little, not many people wanted to do that, but when you have an XSS like this, uh, you probably were not going to park it where you needed the top and the windows up. That's for rainy weather, and this is a fair weather car. Right, and you, these don't open or close, they just unscrew, right? They, it's either all, the, these come off or they go on. Right. There's, there's no putting it halfway down. Amazing. And this is a trunk, of course. This is the kind well, of a vestigial trunk. It's really where the spare tire goes. I was about to say Steve <laughs> McQueen put his luggage in here, but apparently not. Steve no. McQueen would have put his luggage here. On top. On top. Yeah. Right. This is the luggage carrying accommodation. This is like a brand new car. Oh, it's gorgeous, mate. That's but what, what you'll amazing. notice is we like it in this condition because it's not perfect. It's, it's not, pretty it, perfect. It, I was going to say, it, it looks pretty it's, perfect. It's very, very nice, but it's got that little tiny bit of patina because it, it at, at the end of the day, it's it's a race car. It's a, a prized boxer in a tuxedo, is what this car That's is. That's an interesting a, way a, of, a, of a saying A prize that. fighter in it's, wearing a tux. It's, it's Did you amazing. see this as well, Michael, so you can jack up the car? Oh, right, the, yeah. wow, I didn't notice it. It's, a, it's a jacking point you could, because you, you would be expected to have to change the tires. Right. You're going to scrub off a lot of sidewall uh, in, the, in the corners if you're doing it right. The exhaust is extraordinary. Did you see the exhaust? I did. And if you notice, the exhaust is only on one side because the exhaust side of the engine is on the left. It's on the driver's side. Right. Um, a lot of people think, well, shouldn't it have exhaust on both sides to, e to even out? No. Intake is on one side. It's a cross-flow head, and, and the exhaust comes out, out the other. And this right here is so you don't burn yourself on the exhaust. It's, it's but a, that would still it, get pretty hot, It's right? a heat shield. I wouldn't lean against it. I wouldn't right. you know, I'd roll over and, and you know, put my back on it. But, uh, but because it did get hot, but it, it gave you that little bit of, little bit of protection if, if it happened that you ever needed it. Well, I'm in love with this car. Totally, totally in love with this car. And, and Leslie, once again, can't thank you enough. Um, My a, great a, pleasure. A, absolutely thank you. Absolutely educational to the highest degree. And, and I'm even more in love with it now than I was when I first saw it. So guys, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We're in it to win it. I want this. Oh, what a dream. See ya.